What is going on guys? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make a Nokia LCD monochrome screen in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Alright, so this is an effect that I've been wanting to make so badly and I finally got the hang of it. I think uh, you'll be the judge of that looking at this, but I wanted to share with you how I did this. Alright, so first we're going to set up this like quick little artwork. Uh, okay, so we're going to go grab a new file. And we're going to make it really small, only 256 pixels by 256 pixels. All right, so this is an only illustration that I did it like a year ago, maybe two years ago even. Um, but yeah, I thought it might be cool to use this. And we're going to use the font Graveblade, which is in Adobe Fonts. All right, so let's give this text some layer styles. Going to give it a subtle bevel and emboss and a stroke. Let's give it a white background as well. and make the only illustration in black as well. All right, so the next thing I wanted to do was make this a little bit more pixelated. And the way we're gonna do that is going to filter, pixelate, mosaic. And depending on how like pixelated you want it, basically change the settings. Uh, I made mine into a smart object so I can go back and change it later. But I'm gonna use a cell size of two squares now. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go grab a threshold adjustment layer. And based on however you want to change it, right, and basically you can make this the way you want. And so I encourage you to play around with the threshold slider here, the effects of the bevel and the stroke, and the mosaic. But I think mine are fine so far. All right, now we're going to grab two colors, this one and this one. And we're going to go to adjustments and make a gradient map. Let's reverse that. Right, and you can see that it already starts to look like an LCD screen in terms of colors and pixelated uh, things. What I like to do is actually change this into a smart object and make this the same like pixelated version because then like the size of these pixels actually start matching up. Right, so the next thing that you most of the time see is as you can see here, there's actually like a line around every pixel and we're gonna make that an illustrator actually. So we're going to make a new document in Illustrator. We're going to make it the same size as our Photoshop file. We don't need five artboards. And let's remove the fill here. Click under the Line Segment tool and go to Rectangular Grid tool. Our, if we go to our Preferences, click Guides and Grid. So we want to make a grid line every 64 pixels. And subdivisions, we can leave it at 10, I think. So now we'll go to View, Snap to Grid. And we're going to click on view show grid and you should have something like this and if we grab the grid tool here let's make a grid that matches up with all of these lines here like this i'm going to select it and we're just going to duplicate it all right so now we want to lower the stroke here to yeah i think 0.25 is fine Let's select this. And we're just gonna paste it in our Photoshop as pixels. And now I wanna go and see if I can blur this just a little bit, maybe like 0.5 pixels even. Give it a color overlay with the same color as the background here. Okay, then we wanna right click and rasterize the layer style. And then we wanna click on multiply here. And as you can see, we now have that grid like applied to our uh, screen. Well, it's a little bit too harsher. Let's lower the opacity a little bit. Like this. And actually let's set the blend mode to exclusion here and up the opacity a little bit, like maybe to 80%. Because now we can actually see it in our grid, but we can also see it in our pixels here. I actually really like that. So if we actually want to separate all these pixels, what we can do is we can up the mosaic here, but that would like ruin our uh, pixel grid here. But what you can do is if you paste the grid in again, put it all the way to the top, give it like another Gaussian blur, maybe a little lower this time, maybe like 0.2 pixels. If we press command or control and click on the layer thumbnail here, we make a selection. And if we hold other option while clicking on the mask button on our Oni, as you can see, we can, and if we hold Alt Option, we can duplicate the layer to here. You can actually like cut out the grid here 
um, if this will fit in your graphic. In my opinion, in this example, it doesn't really look well, so I'm not going to do it here. But yeah, this is how I would go about cutting the grid out of your graphic, I guess. So another thing that we can do is actually make a noise overlay, which will give this a little bit more depth. You can grab this free 10K package in my web store on dreadlabs.net. And there's an easy noise overlay button. So if we click that, as you can see, this is way too noisy. So let's set it to 5% opacity. And if we zoom in a little bit, yeah, you'll see that it's actually like a little bit ever so slightly. It gives you just that little bit of depth that we need to make it a little bit more realistic in my opinion. So if you want to display this in a high resolution, so there's actually an easy way to do this. Uh, and I learned this from a subscriber of mine. Thank you. Shout out to Zeta Designs. Thank you for the tip. So what I want to do now is I want to go press on a MacBook, Command, Option, Shift, E, or on Windows, Control, Alt, Shift, E. And this will bring up a new layer, which can we call monochrome screen. And let's drag this into a 3000 by 3000 Photoshop file. So we're going to duplicate it to a new document, make the canvas size 3000 by 3000 pixels. So now if we press Command, T, Make sure that the interpolation is set to the nearest neighbor. And now we can just press in 3000 pixels. And there you have it. Uh, so yeah, guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, or you can join us on Discord. I want to take a moment in this video to thank all of my patrons. Because of my patrons, I'm actually able to make these tutorials for you guys. And the more patrons means more content. Uh, so if you don't know, if you become a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files for my tutorials, including this one. You'll get a 15% discount in Dreadlabs web store, as well as a cool Discord role. So if you want to become a patron, click the link in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.